that's what we're concerned about. So how much money is actually going it? It's going to cost you. Doug Shoup at AAA says it's a 0.6 cents per gallon increase, which means the average driver may pay between six and 12 cents extra to fill up. Historically, what we have found is that when we have higher gas prices heading into a major holiday weekend, like 4th of July, like Labor Day, like Thanksgiving, that does not alter most people's plans to travel. 2.8 million people in our region are expected to travel by road this holiday weekend. In just the past few years, California has seen some of the largest, deadliest, and most destructive wildfires. Now experts believe we are heading into another bad fire season. ABC 10 News meteorologist Leah Pizzetti shows us the new technology being used locally to prepare for the worst. A key point UC San Diego wants people to know is that these hot and dry conditions are some of the worst, so they're trying to get ahead of a potentially bad season. A serious message from UC San Diego researchers. We're in extreme drought and we have excessive heat. Or dry winter is part of the reason this summer could be bad. The main message of this is that it's the big storms that really determine whether or not California is going to have a dry or wet year. They're calling these conditions an atmospheric mosquito. It has sucked the moisture out of these fuels and they're just timber ready to go and they're dense and they just the humidity and marine layer, which usually helps suppress these fires, is outmatched. And with this dry fuel ready to spark, new technology is becoming a key player. We're talking about more cameras, AI technology, 3D models, all helping with this fight. These fires are horrific. We need to fight them in the incipient phase. We need to suppress them. We need to do forest management. We have many things on the list to do, but technology is helping us. New models use AI data to look at the 3D scale of dry vegetation, giving important insight about where it might burn the most. Plus, there are 850 alert wildfire cameras in the state that fire crews can use to quickly find the specific locations of fires and tackle them fast. These cameras also help pinpoint the perimeter of a fire. The ability to confirm a fire very, very early on accurately uh, it is critical. With the expectation that fires will spark, using these tools to help tackle them immediately. Leah Pizzetti, ABC 10 News. President Biden is looking to help firefighters during a historic heat wave that is scorching America. He met with the governors of western states today. The president has plans to increase the federal firefighter pay to at least $15 an hour. Permanent firefighters will also receive a 10% retention incentive. Right now, there are more than 9,000 firefighters deployed across western states. You know, California and some other places, the drought conditions are twice that's what they, what they were last year. And right now, we're seeing record heat in Portland and across the west. There are also plans for new satellites to improve earlier detection of fires and apps to inform communities where there is fire danger. In Florida tonight, crews have built a ramp that should allow the use of heavier equipment as they search through that rubble of that condo tower collapse. And this afternoon, two additional victims were found dead, bringing the death toll now to 18. More than 100 others, they are still missing tonight. And as ABC's Morgan Norwood reports, weather is now complicating the rescue efforts. The dangerous and desperate search now intensifying, crews racing against the clock as the potential for tropical weather moves in. The world is watching their bravery, putting themselves in harm's way to find people in the rubble. Federal search and rescue teams now on the ground to help free up state resources to respond to the potential damage from approaching storms. If a system does develop, I want to ensure you we have contingency plans which include facility relocation, communications, backup plans of how we will continue to respond here. As the search and rescue operation continues, new video showing the moments before Champlain Tower South partially collapsed. You can see the rubble and standing water in the parking garage, the same area of concern mentioned in a 2018 structural report. Risa Rodriguez, who made it out alive, says she's been reporting issues in the building for years. The night of the collapse, she says the building, quote, swayed like a sheet of paper. She's now filing a lawsuit. There were clear, not just warning signs, but alarm bells ringing. 64-year-old Ileana Montagudo narrowly escaping. Something inside of me said, run, because this building will collapse. The condo association responding, saying it can't comment on pending litigation. Meanwhile, officials are calling on a grand jury to investigate the cause of the collapse. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Miami Beach, Florida. 
Former Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld has died at 88 years old. He was Defense Secretary for President Gerald Ford in the 1970s and President George W. Bush's in the early 2000s. During his time in the Bush administration, he oversaw the Iraq War and the war in Afghanistan. No cause of death was immediately provided. For the first time, college athletes across the country can now capitalize on their fame. Sometimes their moment in the sun is just when they're in college. Coming up, why the NCAA is now allowing them to make money beyond the cost of attending their universities. And a new report says a number of San Diego police officers are failing to activate their body-worn cameras. The action that could be taken. ABC 10 News is back in 90 seconds. Chula Vista police have released an update on their search for missing mother Maya Miliette. It's over six months since she disappeared from her Chula Vista home. Several agencies, including the San Diego DA's office, the FBI, the NCIS, they continue their joint effort to find Maya. In the last six months, police say that they have interviewed nearly 70 people and written 50 search warrants. Tips have poured in from all around the country, too. Investigators say they continue to review evidence and thousands of pages of data in hopes to find Maya. The Commission on Police Practices says a growing number of police officers are not turning their body cameras on when they should. Our ABC Tenders reporter Melissa Macias shows us the future action that will be taken. It's been about seven years since San Diego police officers started wearing body worn cameras. But recently, the Commission on Police Practices said their concerned officers are failing to activate them. Doug Case is the vice chair for the commission. He said body cameras are critical in reviewing cases. It's useful to the uh, officers. It's also useful to the department and it's useful to us. And so it's a win, win, win. The letter to the police chief said over the last year or so, we have observed multiple officers across all divisions who have failed to activate their BWCs as required per procedure. In one case, the commission reviewed 10 of the 15 responding officers failed to activate their body worn cameras per policy. San Diego police. In a shooting earlier this year in downtown, police said one officer turned on the body camera, but only after a first aid kit was retrieved. We're not quite sure why, why it is. I don't think it's necessarily, you know, intentional on the part of the officers. It could just be preoccupation or forgetfulness. But regardless of what the, the reason is, it's something that we think the department needs to address. The commission is recommending command staff conduct training, reminding officers of body cam requirements, a training bulletin to all staff on procedures, mandatory training in all AOT or advanced officer training every two years, and audit compliance, having command staff physically review videos. A spokesperson for SDPD said they are meeting with CPP next week to discuss this memo and their recommendations. I just want to make sure that it's that the uh, cameras are used uh, consistently according to the policy. Melissa Masiha, ABC 10 News. The commission has an open committee meeting tomorrow at 5. A Boy Scout is in the hospital today after being bitten by a shark off Catalina Island. That 15-year-old boy and his father were canoeing near Parsons Landing this morning. Their boat was then bumped by the shark. The boy reached his hand into the water and was bit. He was airlifted off the island to undergo surgery. As of right now, not much is known about the shark. A shark expert from the Scripps Institution of Oceanography is going to help identify that animal. This 10 News Pinpoint Weather Report is sponsored by Anderson Plumbing, Heating and Air. Nobody wows clients like we do. All right, I think we are all starting to feel that humidity now, Angelica. It is coming in strong. It really is, and we had enough humidity in the atmosphere today, Steve, for some thunderstorms to develop. We saw a couple of them earlier this afternoon around 2, and around 4 o'clock, we had a few more thunderstorms redevelop. Also cloudy skies, gloomy conditions, but it does feel humid along the coast, too. It is going to stay gray at least for the next couple of days. For those of you planning on going to the coast, uh, for tomorrow, waves between 2 and 4 feet, water temperature between 65 and 68. In downtown San Diego, it is 70 degrees. Winds are coming out of the southwest at 8 miles per hour. The chance for isolated thunderstorms will continue in the mountains and deserts through Friday. And the gloom on the coast also set to continue, potentially even into the weekend. However, for the holiday, it will be warmer and drier, warmer by a couple of degrees. I think the biggest changes will happen over the eastern part of the county 
in our mountains and deserts. And as we look closely right now, you can see how some of those thunderstorms kind of pop up and then they die down. If we go back in time, 428, a few of those thunderstorms moving away. And then as we go slowly through the timeline, you can see how it starts to dissipate by 518, just a few leftover showers. So it is a little bit calmer as we speak right now. Over the coast, you can see those clouds from Oceanside hugging the coast all the way down to Imperial Beach. Our relative humidity, 84% in Carlsbad. That is humid. In our mountains, 42%, 44 in Ramona, areas like Escondido, Poway. If you thought it was just a little too humid today, it is, especially when those humidity levels start going above 50%. Future cast, keeping that chance for thunderstorms tomorrow afternoon between 2 and 3, but we can see that chance even into the evening time. Overall, the temperatures are going to be very similar each day, looking at mid 70s at the coast. Patchy clouds, gloomy conditions through the end of the week. And then for the weekend, 74 degrees next week. We'll keep it around 73. Inland communities will be in the mid to upper 80s. Not much of a change with those numbers, but at least the humidity will start to go back down on Saturday. Perfect timing for those of you inland. It'll be drier, but still around 85 degrees on Sunday. And for our mountains, just like today, isolated thunderstorms could develop and any given thunderstorm could potentially bring heavy downpours, also gusty winds, and even may lead to flash flooding. We saw one of those cells this afternoon producing about three quarters of an inch of rain per hour, which when rain falls very quickly, it can lead to flash flooding. 108 for the deserts with isolated thunderstorms Thursday into Friday. It'll feel a little bit more tropical Friday and then better by the weekend. Feeling tropical. All right, Angelica, thank you. Right, let's get a check on that 10 News Time Saver traffic right now. We start with northbound 5 at 6th Avenue. You can see that southbound lane one once again, slowing up as you approach 10th and now the westbound 8 at Interstate 15 in Mission Valley, slow moving towards the east. A lot of backup there at 520. The search for $1,000 cash in the woods of Santa Cruz is on. The idea of a treasure hunt came from two Bay Area men who say they wanted to do something fun to encourage people to get outside and explore our public parks. Right now, all we know is the cash is in a box somewhere in the mountains of Santa Cruz. Organizers say that it is on a safe and easily accessible public trail. Clues will be posted to an Instagram account called the official treasure hunt to help narrow the search. Still a needle in a haystack. Yeah. All right, legal marijuana has become a $17 billion a year business in the U.S., but a new report is uncovering corruption. Coming up, why consumers may be getting ripped off. Skycam Views, sponsored by Carlsbad Solar. The legal marijuana industry in the U.S. is booming, but a new investigation is uncovering a not-so-well-kept secret. ABC's Will Reeve shows how the demand for THC is causing corruption in some testing labs. Legal marijuana is growing in the U.S. It's a $17 billion a year business. But according to an investigative report by 538, the industry is rife with fraud and consumers may be getting ripped off. Consumers are looking for as much THC as they can get which is creating financial rewards for having more THC in products. And that's also creating some really perverse incentives in the market to fraudulently inflate how much THC is actually in that product. THC, tetrahydrocannabinol, is a psychoactive compound found in cannabis. It's what helps get you high. Because retailers know that consumers equate THC with highness, right? And they can charge more to give more is the theory. Exactly. The idea with a lot of consumers is that they're getting more value, more bang for their buck. But there's a problem, right? When we can't trust the potencies on those labels, you know, it creates problems on, on the whole market. But 538 contributor Lester Black says its reputation as the most important part of your pot is overblown. There's over a hundred other active compounds in the plant that affect how you uh, get high when you consume cannabis. Black's investigation found that certain labs across a number of states required to test cannabis on legal farms before it can make its way to the marketplace have been caught inflating their numbers on THC potency, passing moldy cannabis as safe, and even making up results. Why would a lab doctor the results? They're not selling the product. The lab's customer is the farm. So if the lab's giving a lot of really high potent results to the farm, the farm's gonna keep coming back to that lab and giving them thousands or really millions of dollars. How confident should an average consumer walking into a legal cannabis shop feel 
in the product that they're buying in terms of its accuracy on the label? Uh, I, I would not be confident at all about the accuracy on any label at a legal cannabis shop in really any, any state in this country. Will Reeve, ABC News, New York. Also tonight, there are growing concerns about homeless camps popping up in local neighborhoods. Just yesterday, three people were attacked by a homeless man with a skateboard. Coming up, the solution some are now demanding. And California is about to give nearly 250,000 undocumented immigrants access to government health care. We're going to take an in-depth look at how this will work. ABC 10 News at 5 starts now. San Diego police have been grappling with a surge in violent crime since the new year. Police say much of it is from gang activity and the use of untraceable ghost guns. Since January 1st, police say they've seen a 129% increase in gang related shootings. During that time, they've recovered 1000 guns as part of investigations. Of those, police say 20% are ghost guns assembled from kits and lacking serial numbers. Police say 17 violent crimes have taken place in just the last two weeks. And yesterday, police arrested a homeless man after they say he attacked two people with a skateboard. It happened in City Heights, not far from where neighbors have been reporting an increase in the number of encampments. We spoke to one woman who says she and others just hope to see real solutions and soon. These are some of the photos several neighbors in the college area shared with ABC 10 News. They say it's just a sample of the encampments that continue to pop up. They're totally blocking the sidewalk. They're even onto the street. Jean Hoger says she and others use the city's Get It Done app and do see a response from police and other agencies. But just as soon as one camp is cleaned up, another springs up not far away. We would love for them to, to get help obviously, um, but in, in that they refuse to get help and they just move around. We don't really want them to go to jail, but they can't be there. Earlier this week, the city and county launched a new plan, deploying more outreach teams to gain trust and convince people with mental health or substance abuse issues to accept help. But so far, most efforts are concentrated downtown. We don't know what the solution is, and it's kind of like, it's really not our job to find the solution, I guess you could say. ABC 10 News did reach out to Council Member Sean Elo Rivera, who represents the college area. He issued a statement that reads in part, the increasing number of homeless encampments citywide are a concern to us and should be a concern to everyone. Sidewalks, parks, and canyons are not homes, which is why we're working to break the failed patterns of the past and instead utilize proven practices that can solve homelessness by housing people and providing them the resources and services to get back on their feet for good. San Diego police tell us they do still encourage people to report encampments on the Get It Done app and say they will respond to every request, but do ask for patience.